Welcome back to the second video about correlation. In this video, we'll see how we can use hypothesis testing to tell if the Pearson correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero and discuss the assumptions behind the correlation. Once we have estimated the Pearson correlation coefficient, we usually also would like to know if its value is significantly different from zero. Note that the population correlation coefficient is usually denoted by the Greek letter rho. The null hypothesis therefore states that the population correlation coefficient is equal to zero, which means that there is no association or relationship between the two variables. Whereas the alternative hypothesis states that the correlation coefficient is not equal to zero. The alternative hypothesis can also be formulated as the value of rho is either greater or less than zero. To compute a p-value for the correlation, we can first use the following equation to calculate the t-statistic. r is the Pearson correlation coefficient that is estimated based on the sample, and n is the sample size. Let's calculate the t-statistic based on our previous example data on body weight and body height on six individuals. We first need to work out the Pearson correlation coefficient. In the previous video, we calculated the means and the standard deviations of the two variables, then the covariance, and finally the Pearson correlation coefficient, which in this example is equal to 0 0.898. We can now calculate the t-statistic based on our previous Pearson correlation coefficient of 0 0.898 and the sample size of 6 since we have data on six individuals. If we begin the value for the correlation coefficient and the sample size, and do the math, we see that the t-statistic is equal to about 4.1. To compute the corresponding p-value, we use the t-distribution with n minus two degrees of freedom, since we have estimated two mean values in the previous calculations. Our degrees of freedom is therefore 6 minus 2. By using a software, we can calculate the area to the left of negative 4.1 and to the right of positive 4.1 in a t distribution with 4 degrees of freedom. This area is our p value, which in this example is equal to about 0 0.015. Given a significance level of 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the Pearson correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero. Since we know that the correlation coefficient is positive, we can further conclude that there is a significant positive correlation between body height and body weight. Since the large absolute value of the t-statistic reduces the p-value, we can see that a stronger correlation results in low p-value and that a larger sample size, as usual, also reduces the p-value. In our previous example, we had relatively few data points, but a very strong correlation, which resulted in a relatively low p-value. However, if we would have obtained a weaker correlation, we would require a much larger sample size to reject the null hypothesis, given that there actually exists a correlation between the variables. For example, let's say that the Pearson correlation coefficient would have been estimated to 0 0.2. Since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, the correlation coefficient is therefore not significantly different from zero. In comparison, if we collect more data, the Pearson correlation coefficient is expected to be roughly the same, but the p-value is expected to be reduced. Since the p-value is now less than 0 0.05, we can conclude that there is a significant positive correlation. We'll now have a look at how to interpret the 95% confidence interval based on the correlation coefficient. In this example, we see that the confidence interval spans from negative 0.2 to positive 0.4. We are therefore 95% certain that the true population Pearson correlation coefficient lies somewhere between negative 0.2 and positive 0.4. Since this confidence interval includes the value 0, 0 is a plausible value for the population Pearson correlation coefficient. 
we can therefore conclude that the correlation coefficient is not significantly different from zero. In the case where we have a lot more data points, the confidence interval is expected to be narrower. In this case, the confidence interval does not include the value zero. Zero is therefore not a plausible value according to the interval. Since the interval goes from 0.1 to 0.3, we know that the correlation coefficient is significantly greater than zero. Finally, we'll have a look at a few assumptions for using the Pearson correlation. To perform the statistical test, the cases should be independent. This means that in our previous example, one person's weight and height should be independent of another person's weight and height in the dataset. The second assumption is that the scatter of the data should be linear. If the data looks like this, where there is a non-linear pattern, the Pearson correlation is not appropriate, since the Pearson correlation coefficient is a measure of the linear relationship between two variables. It should not be used if the data appears to be non-linear. This is another example of a non-linear relationship where the Pearson correlation would not be appropriate to use. Another assumption is that both variables are on continuous scale and follow a normal distribution. In addition, the Pearson correlation is very sensitive to outliers. For example, the following data points indicate that the two variables are completely uncorrelated, which means that the correlation coefficient is close to zero. However, if we add the following data point, a test would result in a significant positive correlation between the two variables. And if the data point would be down here, we are likely to observe a significant negative correlation. This feels a bit strange because a single data point will completely determine our conclusion. If your data has outliers, or if your variables are on ordinal scale, the non parametric alternative called the Spearman's rank correlation can be used. In the next lecture, we'll have a closer look at the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, which computes the correlation based on ranked data.